Hello, welcome back. In this exercise, we're just going to do some basic exercises uh, using the standard normal probability distribution. This is really just an exercise in how to navigate and use the um, standard normal probability tables that uh, you probably have or have, have been trying to use. So here's, uh, just quickly, I've got lots of room on this page, so I'm going to make use of it. So here's our standard normal distribution, has a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Now, this problem, no context, is just kind of a mechanical problem here to calculate probabilities. So here's that distribution. Uh, what we want to do, what's the probability that z is less than or equal to one, positive one. Now the tables that we have are usually um, give us values to a second decimal place. So this is really 1.00, okay? So if this is zero is my mean, one is going to be somewhere out here, z equals one. So we want the probability that a z value is less than or equal to one. So anytime we see that less than sign, I know that I'm looking for these probabilities in the lower tail or the left hand tail, otherwise known as the cumulative uh, probability. And as it so happens, this is what this is how the tables are designed. So when I look at you know, the tables that I'm using, uh, I just pulled these off a uh, uh, quick search on Google, Google Images. Uh, these tables are giving me all of those lower tail uh, or cumulative probabilities. So uh, I figure out a Z value and it's giving, whoops, what happened? And it's giving me these lower tail probabilities. So, if I'm looking for uh, the probability that corresponds with the value of one, here I'm going to scroll down to this side of the table. So now I have all positive values here. And again, it's giving me that probability to the left of my Z value. So if I have a Z equal to 1.00, this first column gives me the first integer and first decimal. So it gives me these two, so I'm looking for 1.0. And then this first row is the second decimal place, so then that would be here, which is zero. So that's my 0 1.00. I'm looking at these two values and where they come together, that gives me the coordinates of my probability of interest. So here I'm looking at a value of point eight four thirteen. So that means that this area under the curve is point eighty four thirteen and that's my problem, uh, that's my answer to the first problem, eighty four thirteen. Okay, so that what that means in, in common terms is that uh, from the standard normal distribution, if I have a hat full of numbers and you know, it's, imagine these numbers are continuous, so there's every possible value um, that exists uh, with a mean of zero, et cetera, it follows this, this distribution. If I reach into that hat and I just draw a number at random, uh, there's a probability of 0.8413, or let's say an 84.13% chance that when I draw a number from that hat, that it's going to be something less than or equal to one. Okay, so that's that's all there is to it. Less than or equal to one, uh, fairly high probability. Now, if we look at uh, the next problem, what's the probability that it's less than or equal to 0.5? So it's the same exercise. Uh, here I'm just going to now look. Here's that 0.5 is somewhere in here. So now when we go to our tables, I'm looking for z equals 0 0.5. So those first two values are the 0 0.5, so I'll find those here. My second decimal is a 0, so that's still that first row. And get that out of the way. And so there's my value of interest right there, right, where those two come together. That gives me my probability of interest of 0.6915. So here, this pink area then is 0 0.6915. Now, just for fun, because I know this is so much fun, what if I wanted to know the probability that Z is between 0.5 and 1? So greater than 
0.5 and less than 1. So what if I wanted to know this probability here? That is between those two numbers. Well, I've already, I already have the probability that it's less than 1. I have the probability that it's less than 0.5. So if I calculate then the probability that z is less than or equal to 1 and subtract from it the probability that z is less than or equal to 0.5, well, that will give me the probability that z is between 0.5 and 1. So we can get all kinds of different combinations, and really that's what we're going to do in part D. But let's just see while we're here. Might as well work this one through. So that would be 8, 4, 13, minus 0 0.69, 15. And so this is going to give me a value of 0.8413 minus 0.6915. So 0 0.1498. Okay, so this, sorry, this wasn't one of the questions in the problem. This is just a little bit of an aside because we had the information to, to do it. So that would give us this green space here. Okay, moving on. Uh, probability that z is less than or equal to negative 1. Same exercise. Find here's negative 1 here. And we're going to find this. I'm going to clean this up. Boy, this gets messy so fast. Okay, there we go. So we're looking for the area to the left of negative 1. And so, let's see, where's my z table? So negative 1, I need to move to the other side, because now all of my values here are negative. So there's negative 1.00. And so again, where those come together, 0.1587. So this is 0 0.1587. Okay, now we're looking for, this is similar to the exercise that I just did over here for fun. The probability that we're between negative 1 and positive 1.5. So, oh, I'm running out of colors here. Uh, blue, red. Here we go, here's 1.5 up here. So I want to calculate this space in between. So we can use the same same methodology that we employed over here. If I calculate the probability that z is less than 1.5, so that would actually be this whole space here, right? everything less than 1.5, and then subtract from it the probability that it's less than negative 1. So then I subtract from it this space, this yellow space in here. Put some more yellow in there. So subtract off of this. That will give us the area in between negative 1 and positive 1.5. So let's look up uh, our value for 1.5. So if we come to our table, uh, come down to our positive. Here's 1.50, so we're still in that same space, and that's 0.9332. So the red space, the probability that z is less than or equal to 1.5, this is 0.9, oops, what was it? I don't want to make a silly mistake here. 9332. minus this probability here, which we've already calculated right here, 1587. This is equal to 0.9332 minus 0.1587, so 7744. Good, is that right? Seven seven. Four five, sorry. Seven seven forty five forty five. There we go. So that's our red space greater than negative one. 
and less than 1.5. Perfect. So hopefully that was um, straightforward enough. It's helpful to get as much practice as you can using these tables. Generally speaking, uh, for my students when I write exams, I don't usually allocate a lot of extra time uh, for them to be fumbling around with the tables. So it's, it's really helpful uh, to become as comfortable with these uh, distribution tables uh, as you possibly can. So I hope that this helped um, get you a little bit more comfortable. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.